again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome formally to Barnes & Noble Union Square. We are here tonight to celebrate the publication of Chef Gabrielle Hamilton's acclaimed new memoir, Blood, Bones, and Butter. To the many ladies in the audience, particularly those who have braved the brunch time on many a freezing morning, Ms. Hamilton needs no introduction. As chef owner of the beloved and now iconic East Village restaurant Prune, she comes with the cred of having run and maintained an exceptional neighborhood joint for over a decade. Now, along with being a great cook, Ms. Hamilton is also one hell of a writer. Even before the publication of this book, Ms. Hamilton's essays have been featured in Gourmet, Food and Wine magazine, Savour, and the New York Times magazine. Blood, Bones, and Butter is a portrait of her jagged path to the kitchen. It is as, it is as delectable and sharp of a read as one would expect from one of the culinary world's most passionate iconoclasts. Now, joining Ms. Hamilton in conversation is a good friend of hers. You can say he's responsible for pimping out her marrow. <laughs> he also has some literary chops himself. I'm speaking of the no longer on font, but still quite terrible, Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> He is the author of the best-selling memoirs, Kitchen Confidential, and Medium Raw. Ladies and gentlemen, please give the warmest welcome to both of our guests. And with that, we will turn the stage over to Anthony Bourdain. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, This is the painful part. It's going to get easy, easy after this. Okay, this is, I actually wrote this down because I kind of want to get it right. You know, I, mean, I just want to say that I'm here today to talk with the author of what I believe absolutely to be the best food-related memoir ever. Okay, <laughs> Gabrielle Hamilton, clearly an extraordinary person in that rare and literal sense of the word. Uh, she has, she is, and has been from the moment she opened a restaurant, Prune. Clearly a hardworking, talented, and amazingly uncompromising chef. This was something that was pointed out to me by other chefs within, I think, moments of you showing up from wherever the hell you came from. <laughs> <laughs> the menus that she created were personal in ways that were unprecedented, and in, in this she was way, way, way ahead of her time. She seemed to come right out of nowhere and right from the beginning, cooked the kind of food she wanted to and nothing else in the kind of space she wanted to, surrounded only by the kind of people she wanted to work with. And you felt it improve, you felt that at that, that, that point. And it was a wonderful thing to experience. And of course you wonder, you know, how the hell did she do it? You know? No one else was getting away with that at the time. To live a life without compromise in the restaurant business in New York City seemed incredible to all of us who, who saw what was happening there. And Gabrielle always seemed to have carved out this small, refreshingly bullshit-free zone around her. With the publication of this amazing book, Blood, Bones, and Butter, Gabrielle will now be thought of as a writer who is a chef. And I guess that's true enough, I guess. But I knew her first as a chef and already somebody special. Then came the articles in Food and Wine and The New Yorker, and it was all too clear that she could write brilliantly. Now, I knew this book was coming, and I've been waiting for it, as many people have, for like five years. <laughs> and I knew and I expected it. You know, I knew she could write, and I expected this book to be great, but I really, I just wasn't prepared for how great. Uh, honestly, I'm ashamed reading it. Um, <laughs> it's a, it, is, it is so much richer and more carefully and beautifully crafted a thing than anything I've ever done. Uh, there's a more thoughtful voice at work here describing a life that frankly seems so much richer in both, well, in everything. Um, but you knew that already, I assume, or you wouldn't be here. Every chef I know, by the way, who's read this book, and they've all read it, you know, they, and I'm talking about chefs who read maybe one or two books every five years. <laughs> They've all read this book. They all love it. If they can read. It is my, <laughs> it, it, it is my singular honor to do this with you, Gabrielle Hamilton. Um, so 
So I'm really loving this because I'm getting first crack at all these really like these questions that will be excruciating a month down the line now. Um, right, but in media training they tell me to receive them with bemused curiosity. So, here we go. From the, from the very beginning, how long? How long did it take? To write the book? Yeah. I think, <laughs> I mean, uh, we sold the book five years ago, and maybe I really started writing it a year ago. <laughs> it took a very long time. It's sort of like asking how long did it take you to finish college if you went night school part-time. You know, I have a full-time job. I'm the chef of a restaurant and the owner, which is, in some books, two jobs. And then at the time that I sold the book, I had a baby and another one out, coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Nursing, I mean, it was just sort of everything I wanted in the whole world happened all at once, unfortunately. Or, so it took a little while. Mm -hmm. So, you, that's an excuse? I, <laughs> <laughs> so, I know, uh, there wasn't much going on. So now that, you know, here it is, you know. I mean, I know when my first one came out, I, did, I slept, I put it on the pillow, I smelled it. I did make out with it. <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> uh, it is completely thrilling. It's the um, something I've wanted to do my entire life since I was a child. It's a child writing in little journals with the lock and key. And, um, so I've finally written a book. It's amazing. It's very different than magazine articles as well, as you know. I think I was not a writer when I started this book, and I sort of feel like I became one by the end. Um, I had written magazine articles, but it's just such a different story. It's a completely different beast. The reviews have been, I mean, un like, unbelievable. Uh, you know, home run from the Times, home run from the Washington Post, uh, Wall Street Journal, everywhere. Okay. Uh, is that yeah. completely terrifying? <laughs> I was very determined to write my own book and to not write, for example, The Female Kitchen Confidential, which everyone asked me for five years, oh, you're writing a book? Is it The Female Kitchen Confidential? And I was like, ah, uh, no, or are you, are you the next, ha ha, or the new so-and-so? I hadn't thought of you were to hear that again. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't with like, uh, daytime television? You know, when you do the 9 o'clock or the 8 o'clock drive time uh, news shows in I don't know yet. Time. You're 10 and years into this. This will. is my first you, day. You, you, <laughs> you will get the glassy-eyed look from the person who read the, you know, maybe the one paragraph briefing. You know, so, so I guess this is like, I don't know, the, 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 the female version of Kitchen Company. Get, get used to that and, 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 you know, find some brutal and diminishing way to really take <laughs> Say, well, no, actually, that's it's not much, what they talk in media say, training. <laughs> what are they say, No, actually, it's much better than that. You should say that. <laughs> uh, no, it just feels very good to um, have done my own thing, and there's not a lot of encouragement to do that sometimes, and then to be validated. I mean, that's that's a good day. <laughs> Do you have any idea what you face uh, in book tour? And, uh, <laughs> 19, I know. 19, 19 As my cities. friend Dan said, that I naively thought it was going to be 19 manicures in 19 cities. But um, <laughs> right, I'm going to work hard. You know, try to get them to pay for the mini bar. Yeah. <laughs> Since you have this monster book tour coming up, and you're going to be asked a lot of the same questions over and over, and over what is the What's the question you dread? You know that there's a big dumbass question out there. There's one, there are a number for me that it's just like my eyes roll up in my head and I start going to this fugue state. Uh, what's the one, I'm sure you've been asked it already. What, what is it? What's the one you hate? It's not hate, it's just um, everyone wants to know when the next book is going. <laughs> it's before this one I even went on sale. I was sort of like, can I just have 15 minutes to enjoy this? and. You know, drink champagne in 19 cities or whatever on the book tour.